in your opinion, what is the number one recommendation that you have for any agent to make the biggest impact in their agency moving forward? To make the biggest impact, everyone has to know their role. Insurance dudes are on a mission to escape being handcuffed by our agencies. How? By uncovering the secrets to creating a predictable, consistent, and profitable agency sales machine. I am Craig Kretzinger. I am Jason Feldman. We are agents. We are insurance dudes. So how do you bring, like, when you when you have recruited in the past and, and everything, how do you bring somebody up to the level of success that you expect? Well, for one, I've always been a, a little overbearing on processes. Uh, so that's good. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'm trying to recreate that here in the transition too, because um, I wasn't able to bring everything over because some of it was on proprietary computers. Ah. Uh, but, but, you know, I've always been really big on, on systems and processes, having everything written out to where, you know, everybody knows the objective, everybody knows what they're supposed to do, you know, and probably training has been the 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 downfall of that because you know where i always knew that you know definitely most agencies you know the the ceo or the principal needs to aspire to run it as a ceo and you need to be able to take a step out and you need to be able to work you know on your business and not in it i have always had a problem of always working in it um and so we always had the processes and systems there but being able to step out of production to like hold the new team members hand so that they they knew exactly what they do they could you know, mirror what you were doing probably was a little bit of a probably was something more, that i needed to work on a little bit more most most of the time you know i, I would say the the best time that i ever did it i had a, a a gentleman that worked with me and i sat him across from me so i had my desk and he i turned his desk staring at me and so for <laughs> probably six months all he did was stare at me uh, it was kind of awkward but he heard every phone call. I mean, he saw every quote. He, you know, got to sit and listen to every phone call that I made when I pitched, you know, pitched a proposal. And, um, you know, I, I wish that I could convince him to come work with me today. But, you know, he has his own agency today, does phenomenally well. And I and I love to say it's probably not true, but I would love to say that it was all because he had to stare at me for six months and, you know, it was. Continue, continue working with me after that. You know, but, uh, you know, I think really from my standpoint, probably other others that, that are in a similar boat, you know, systems and processes written down are great, but, you know, you really need to invest a lot into new team members and not just telling them what to do, but showing them what to do, you know, on a daily basis. Yeah. yeah I because, love that. And I don't sell yourself short. If he didn't leave the business after he had to sit across from you for six months, but ended up getting an agency himself, I mm -hmm. think he did something good. Okay. Well, you I'll, made an I'll, impact. I'll take it. And yeah, act like for it sure. <laughs> so you brought up Teledudes a couple of times. So I don't want this to be some Teledudes commercial or have anybody think that. Like that's not the point. But yeah. what the point is, we're real passionate about the process itself. So aside from the call, we don't need to talk about the callers, but let's talk about the process because you coming in. How familiar had you been with internet leads or with with creating this kind of process, right? Where you know. Oh, if I buy the lead, then this is what's going to happen. Right? How have you had had you had experience with that before? So I've I've always dabbled in um, with internet leads. The problem always was the number of dials you had to put on them in order to get them. Always was, and it was it was something that that. Um, we could never overcome even myself. I mean, I, I couldn't do it either. It was, you know, how do you stay engaged with that lead even after you have called them 10 times and they still won't pick up? Yeah. And so what I would do, what all my team members would do is, you know, they might call them a few times and then there goes John. John's just somewhere floating around that CRM that nobody's ever going to talk to John anymore. And so then you've just flushed that money down the toilet and, um, you know, but the, the thing was, is I would just crank up the lead volume until we would start writing something. You yeah, it's probably the bad ones because, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like if they walked in the door and asked for insurance, that's the customer you never want. Right. Kind of like the Internet lead. If they immediately pick up and say, here's my credit card number, you probably you're not going to keep yes. it long term. Yeah. Um, so that's always been our problem is how to put enough dials on. And so I've always thought, you know, how in the world can we overcome this? Well, you know, it used to be, well, 
hire some telemarketers. <laughs> Good luck. Find all right, let's go hire some high school students and <laughs> let's go pay them eight dollars an hour and see how many dials they can make. Well, you want to talk about people leaving for lunch? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to make you know fifty calls and then they're going to get up and go to the bathroom and they're going to walk straight out the front door. I mean, yeah, that's just, that's just what happened. And so I was always trying to figure out how to do it. And I'm lucky that I stumbled across, um, you know, teledudes. So not to make this an infomercial for the teledudes, but, you know, I have seen people with State Farm and other captive agencies, even independent agencies that are doing personal lines. You've got to do high volume. I mean, you, you do. I mean, uh, I don't want to be negative on this part of the industry, but there's certain carriers we'll leave nameless that have driven so hard to commoditize personal lines insurance that we it's hard to beat it out of people that it's just it's not just price it's not it, right. there's way more to it than price but that's what everybody thinks and that's what as agents a lot of us have become victim to that and just sell on price and so in my mind the only way to survive in personal lines and grow long term is to have a lot of you know, because you're going to kind of churn a little bit. I mean, you've, you're going to have a, you know, lapse can that's going to be there. But you, you've got to write a lot of business. You have to put on a lot of calls. And you're going to have to find somebody that's willing to do it. Well, yeah. these days, good luck trying to find somebody that's going to make. I mean, and y'all might do it too. But, I mean, I've always had a hard time with my team members when I go, hey, y'all need to be prepared to make 100 outbound dials a day. And right. people will look at me like I'm crazy. Like you got 15 heads. Yeah. Which, I mean, I've got this perfect lady now that she makes 700. Wow. <laughs> dials a day. I mean, oh, yeah, you yeah, do. I mean, Sorry, I, I was like, wow, know. who? Oh, yeah, wait, I know exactly. who. Yeah, you know who. <laughs> uh, but I mean, she makes 700 outbound dials a day. I mean, there's yeah. no, you couldn't even pay me enough money to do it. I don't even know if I'm capable of it. Crazy, huh? It is. But I mean, I, I honestly think that, you know, there's some things that we have to get over in the agency about being better at closing. We, we definitely, we've got to be better yeah. at closing, but, um, in my opinion, this is the way to do it. Yeah. But that, how do you get better at closing by doing it more? Right. Yeah. Well, closing and doing, you know, I hate to say role playing. It's just, uh, it, I know, uh, but you know, research, <laughs> but it's magic. training, practicing, you. Yeah, yeah, practicing, but I mean, that's the way to do it. Cause I know myself, I mean, I'll sit there and preach to everybody in the office about this is what we got to do. This is what we got to do. And, and today I did it with a producer, you know, I was like, we are not going to talk about price. We're not going to talk about price. And then he gets somebody on the phone. He goes, Hey, I promise you, we're going to be the cheapest. I'm going to save you some uh, money. We're going to get this cheaper. And I said, Ben, I said, I told you we're not going to talk about price. He said, I know as soon as I came out of my mouth, I knew you're going to say something to me. And, I'm, and then I get on the phone, you know, 30 minutes later and dead gum if I say the same thing. Yeah. So <laughs> you just have to be on top of it all the time. And, and like y'all talk about too, I mean, you really, you have to do it every day. It's got to be in your face in order for you to not forget it. Yeah. But I, you know, if it's at the beginning of that conversation, it's not too bad. You know, okay. because because I think in the way you can shift away from that pretty easily is that when you start talking towards the end and you are giving them higher coverage and a higher price mm -hmm. and they can and then you say, yeah, man, for what you're getting, this is like so cheap yeah. because I mean, yeah. price is just the subjective. You know what I mean? Like the the cost of it is subjective, mm -hmm. you know, so. Well, you know, it's really all about trying to and I mean, I have. I've worked so hard over the years to try to figure out a script to, you know, build value. You know, sometimes I believe that people care about that when I'm going through the script and sometimes they might not. I don't know. Um, and I know that y'all have worked with them in the past. Um, uh, when Vlad first started, uh, I had worked with him on a script that he had. Um, yeah. And uh, it was I mean, it was a phenomenal script. Um, unfortunately, the the company that he was preaching it to did not did not, not like the cadence of that script. So he had to pivot. But, you know, I mean, it was it was great at just, you know, overcoming an objection, you know, uh, acknowledge, empathize, go back, you know, start and just keep yeah. going and, um, you know, try to just build a little bit more value than what they currently have. And yeah, uh, so. but you know what the great thing is about what they currently have? They have zero clue zero because clue. because yeah. one out of 20 agencies have told the, this person actually what they have. The rest. <laughs> It's it's all just a number, yes, a, a price. Yeah, so nobody actually. It, beating it. Yeah, you it's could tell them that you got bodily injury and, and like like no other policy has this, and they'd be like, oh yeah, you know <laughs> right. they they don't know, they don't no. know what that means. They were like bodily. I don't even know what that means. Okay, yes, uh huh, right. They don't nope. want to sound stupid, so they just say yes, and then 
it's some amount for something. They don't know what that is. They don't know what they're paying. Nobody knows what, what, and, and all their, their preconditioned to think cheapest is the best, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which nobody wants the cheapest. I mean, you live in this, you're, you're in the South, you're in the South. You probably hunt, you hunt, you go hunting. Not much anymore, but I sure, I, I do know okay. how to do it. Would you, would you go and get gear from Kabbalah's or would you go to Walmart to get the Ozark stuff? Right? Like you're not going to be in the you're not going to get that ozark brand from walmart yeah to you know for hunting and, and your tent and and that's the cheap stuff right you yeah. want a good deal but you don't want cheap that's right and and it's that that difference and also i think it's, it's important and we talked about this on the call today is that confidence of the of the producer who's talking about these things especially when they close and when they're t- and when they're going through those objections mm-hmm. right that's if if they get timid and they're they're not going to win, you know. They got to yeah. be strong yeah, and, and, and I've thought about and and I'm horrible at this. I don't know what, how y'all do it, but you know, we've always been ones where we we try to stay away from price, but we ask how much they're paying. And, we don't ask. Okay, and so I've started like really thinking like, why? Why even ask what we're, what we're paying? Yeah. Let's let's set it up in a value proposition and get them something better than they have, and just automatically try to go to the close. And if they say it's higher, well, I mean, we didn't say we we're going to be cheaper. We're going to get you something better. Uh, I just. I, I look at every question that's asked along the way. What is the, the probability that that question is going to have an answer that helps move it towards a yes? And I think asking how much they're paying, like, hey, so how much are you paying now? The answer is probably going to be less than what we're going to be saying. For us, it isn't. it doesn't help us, right? There's a mm-hmm. greater likelihood that now we're going to, it's going to be some low amount because they're a guy or wherever. And now the producer's like, oh man, now I got to be, right? Mm-hmm. So, so they're already sort of defeated and I don't want them to feel defeated. I want them to go in strong and who cares? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. And, it's, and even when it's, uh, this is what we talk, it, it's very difficult for them to do this, but we push and push and push on it. It's like, let's say somebody comes back, they have 50 DUIs or whatever, and supposedly they could qualify and it's 6,000 a month, right? Something insane. We want them to, to, Say that to them with confidence too, because if you can say that with confidence, then you can close anybody on anything, right? You, you They're not going to close them, and that's okay. But no. at least act like it's great. You know, well, if you, you can you make me think about a story I had written. This guy, it's way back when I was at the beach. Yeah, he kept getting he he had a DUI. He kept getting these speeding tickets, and one was like evading police. <laughs> and he owned a convenience store. Or a couple of convenience stores, and the, one of the evading the, the the one evading the officer was his store was getting robbed, and so he was flying to the store to try to get there. Like I don't know what he thought he was going to do. Yeah, was he gonna but, tackle the guy? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I remember his progressive policy was like like eight thousand dollars every six months, and and I can't I can't remember his name. Um, but you know, I mean, I, I just, I was like, you have got to quit getting speeding tickets. And I said, you definitely right. don't need to be getting tickets like this. And he said, uh, Mr. Jamie, he said, you know what your job is? Your <laughs> job is to write my insurance. He goes, if I want to get a speeding ticket, I can afford the speeding ticket. Your job is to get my insurance. That's true. And so, but it was, it was one of those <laughs> things where I remember when I quoted him, I was like, there's no way this man is going to actually take this quote. But I was just like, I'm just gonna throw it out there and see if he takes it. And, and he did. And he did take it. It was huge. I mean, it just blew me away. I can't I can't imagine how bad the other quotes had to have been. But thank you for sharing that. And I think that's very, very important for everybody to hear, right? Yeah. Eight thousand dollars every six months. You thought there was no chance he's taking it. He said yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, anybody at sales has had that situation where the per- whatever who whatever they were selling, they thought there was no chance, and the person said yes, right? Mm-hmm. Like we never know. No, you don't. I mean, you, you cannot ever put yourself, you know, you, you can't spend somebody else's money. And that's what, I, I mean, I've done it. And my team members have tried to do it. And it's the one thing that I try to beat out of everybody is that you, you have yeah. no clue what they're dealing with on the other side of the phone. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the biggest problem. The biggest problem I've seen with salespeople is to get them to believe. And this is why I think it's hard to teach life insurance sales. Yeah. Because People put their own perception, their own buying subjectivity on the sale. This is expensive. I know it's a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. It's like not to Donald Trump, like not to, you know, not to certain people, certain certain people. 
you know, your mid-level car is chump change. You know what I mean? Like to certain people, like these big expensive things are cheap. Mm -hmm. So why go into it thinking that like it's way better to go into it the opposite way. We always go into the way of thinking everything's more expensive. Why don't we go uh, into it thinking that everything is less expensive? Like, dude, this is nothing. Yeah. Right. Well, but it's five thousand dollars, dude. It's it, this is nothing. You Just know like what y'all are saying? It's a mindset. I mean, you know. Yep. I mean, it, it's all a confidence mindset of where you know. Yep. And I'm going to do that after we got you know from this uh, from this call. That, that is what I'm going to go back tomorrow and tell everybody we are just not asking about how much they're paying anymore we're just not going to care we're just going to try yep. to build value and if they take it they take it and, and what you can do is like if you're always going in for like a more ex like if you're going into it with a more expensive price you know you're raising the coverages right you're always going in raising the coverages whatever they have all you have to do is prove that their other policy is irrelevant and you won mm -hmm. because then the price doesn't matter yeah because it's irrelevant because that policy sucked like That's that right. policy was not the right fit. So it's irrelevant for the situation. Oh, but my own, my other policy is only a hundred bucks and you're charging 200, but it, it wouldn't have covered you. That's like right. you already told me that it, that policy is irrelevant. Of course it's yeah. only a hundred bucks. It sucks. Might as well just been, <laughs> been paying your neighbor a hundred dollars a month sure and it would have been anything. the same thing. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, I love it. Oh man. Yeah. You know, it makes me so, think of, I listen to too many podcasts and that statement of paying your neighbor a hundred bucks. is like going after, some of these larger commercial accounts and they're like, you know, well, Hey, I've got my buddy, you know, my buddy, Jim, I play golf with Jim all the time. And he's just my agent. I love Jim. And I'm like, well, you know, heck and this, I'm stealing it from somebody else that said this on a podcast, but you know, heck, if you're that good of friends with Jim, I mean, I didn't know that, that paying your friend $50,000 a year was that, you know, that was that special. Why don't you just let me save you this much money and just pay Jim $10,000 and y'all go play golf together. You know, I mean like, Oh, that's, that's a good one. I like that. That's an expensive friendship right there. You got Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another, Love. another one I was thinking of is, is you get on an airplane, whether you're in first class or you're in the back, you get there at the same time. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a little more comfortable than the first class, but is it, is it worth four times the price to some people? Right. Yeah. Like I could go ask my daughter if she's going to fly to England or wherever she's going to go fly to, you going to sit in first class. Hell no, I can't, I'm not spinning that. Right. But Somebody else is going to say, hell yeah, there's no way I'd sit in the back, right? Yeah. They, like the, it's worth it to them. Sure. Now, I don't think it's worth that for, to get, you know, you, you get there at the same time. <laughs> I love stuff. it. I love, I love like, <laughs> the sales conversation. It's yeah. so much fun because it really is a mental game with yourself. Like the, for the salesperson, it's the mental game is with themselves. It's not with the other person. No. I agree. Because the other person's either going to buy or not based on whatever data that they have, right? Mm -hmm. So it's literally how much can that person stand here now and how much confidence will they have that they can get it and how consistent are they going to be to go through enough people to get to the yes and be confident along the way? Well, yeah, I, I told everybody today because <laughs> uh, there are three of us novice today and I was like, I got the phone. I had this lady on the phone and she was telling me that she didn't have time. She didn't have time. And so I was like, okay, well, I, I totally understand that you don't have any time. Um, and she was like, let me call me back at one. I was like, I want to make sure I've got all the information that I need so that at one o'clock we can go real quick. And so I go back and ask her some more questions. She's like, sir, you're not letting, you're not listening to me. I've got to go. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. I totally understand. And I keep going. And then she goes, I've had enough. And she hangs up on me and I, <laughs> I throw my hands up and I said, I won. And they were like, what did you do? And I was like, somebody hung up on me. I did not stop until they hung up Love on it. me. <laughs> It's so great. The best lesson that they could have learned. Yeah. You turned a no into an opportunity to teach the entire team how to do it. Yeah. At least I got enough information so that I can actually do a quote. So. Yep. Love it. So Jamie, in your opinion, what is the number one recommendation that you have for any agent to make the biggest impact in their agency moving forward? To make the biggest impact, everyone has to know their role. Hmm. And so, you know, just things as cheesy as, you know, having a handbook or having a pro let's say having a script. I mean, you know, the, the way to make the biggest impact is for processes to be written out systems to be in place and everyone knows their roles and their responsibilities. And that way, one, you never have to get onto anybody because you're not getting onto them. They're just failing to follow the systems or processes. Um, and, and they're either buying into those or they're not. And so, I mean, I think that's probably the, 
the way to have the biggest impact to the agency. Great stuff. I love it. So Jamie. good. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you so much for being on the uh, podcast. We appreciate yeah. it. And thank you for being committed to your agency. You're on the call every Wednesday. So that's awesome. Try my best. You know, it, honestly, it, it's a, uh, it's a lot of valuable information. It really is. I mean, it's, it's things that, that I've heard, but you know, you forget. And then it's so nice to see other people that are still trying to figure out or struggling with the same information. Sometimes you can feel like, feel like you're sitting on an Island and it's nice to know that you're not. It's all, you know what I always say? It's, it's, it's all, all of it is just like spinning plates. You know, you got all these yeah. p- plates spinning and, as soon as you got one going, you you know, another's starting to slow down and then you mm-hmm. got to go back over and spin that plate. And it's like, I mean, it, there's always something, right? Never there's always some work. hundred percent. Yep. Like your grandma said, action takers are money makers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, sorry awesome. about it taking me forever to figure out how to work the uh, headset and the microphone. It's okay. The it listeners happened. didn't know. It oh, well, that's true. Craig yeah. and I all the time. Well, yeah, yeah. What do you think we were doing before you got on? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I always used to say, if you slam, uh, slam a screen door in a hurricane enough times, it will close. So, oh, <laughs> I like that. I like we that. don't have many hurricane jokes on this side of the country. No, there but, we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dry heat. That's all we say here. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear you. All Love right. It. Well, thank you, and we'll uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. All right, gentlemen. Y'all have a good rest of your day. All right. You too, all right. Jamie. Thank right, you. See you.